everyone, Annie here again from Stamp Anything, and today we're going to make this adorable, uh, masculine, woodsy type traditional uh, Christmas card. I just wanted it to be a little bit more masculine and not um, so girly. So we try to get some wood feel in here, and I hope you like it. Hi everyone, Annie here from Stamp Anything, and today we are going to be doing um, another make and take with you. We are going to be making a classic, cute um, card. So this is the kit that you got, and you'll also have gotten a die with this as well in your kit. So we just want to um, get out our kit contents. So we can make sure everyone has what they need. Whoop. Be careful with your little red holly balls there. Okay, so in your kit, you should have gotten a six by six piece of chipboard. You should have gotten your card base and envelope, your little coupon thing. <laughs> A strip of gold cardstock, some green sprigs, one large and two small. And then you should have gotten three holly berries. I'm going to leave these in my bag for now so I don't lose them. You're going to get a little sentiment that says season and then a mini stencil. And then you also will have the greetings word die. So. We're going to go ahead and start prepping our card. And I kind of wanted this to be um, traditional, but kind of masculine in the same sense. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to take our six by six card stock, um, chipboard rather, and we're going to cut that down to an A2 size to fit on top of our card base. So we're going to go... Um, four and a quarter, four and a quarter by five and a half. And if you have um, a card mat die, you could always just um, cut it out with your card mat die as well. But now we have our um, mat that is going to go on top of our card. Okay. What other thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need um, some inks. Uh, these are our hybrid inks, but if you have dis Distress Oxide, that's also gonna work because we want to um, make this chipboard kind of look like wood grain. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your ink and you're just Obviously, if you're using the Distress Oxide, it's a bigger ink pad as well. Um, but you're just going to pull it down onto your mat like so to give it a kind of... And you don't want to press hard. You want to lightly go over it so it gets that streaky, wood grainy type look to it. And it's really that simple. And that is going to create your wood grain looking faux base. Okay. The next thing that we're going to want to do is um, let's go ahead and we're going to go and cut out our die that came with your kit out of the pretty gold paper. So you want to go grab your um, die cut machine. I'm going to go grab mine and then we will go ahead and cut this out. Okay, so here is my die. I just taped it on to my cardstock, um, and then I ran it through my Big Shot machine. Now we're just going to take it off. And you're gonna let's tape off our tape as well while we're there. We're gonna wiggle it out. If you have a piercy tool, this is the great time to uh, grab your piercy tool and you also want to make sure you get all these little uh, in between the E's and the G's. You want to make sure you get all of that out of your cut die and it's going to look like this when you're done. 
okay? Again, I wanted it to be kind of traditional, but kind of masculine. And that is where we're gonna come in with our stencil. This is the buffalo plaid stencil, reminds you of like a lumberjack. And we're gonna do some stencil on stenciling now. So I'm gonna put this aside and I'm gonna grab that strip that we cut off. This is just for practice so you guys can test pretty much some of the inks that you have. Um, I'm going to try with some red. This is, again, our own ink. It's a hybrid ink. It's crimson. And the first part that you're going to do is you're not with your stencil on your actual chipboard. You're going to lay down some of the color. Okay, that would be your first layer. Then what you would do after, it's, again, this is just practice for you to learn about the on color on color stenciling. Then you're gonna ink the same color, but you're gonna do it harder with your pressure to really start to get, there you go, it is now red on red. And the reason for that is if you didn't do it, it would be the chipboard that shows through where the red is. But you can do this with other colors, you can do it black on black, the browns on brown, whatever you want. But since we're doing a Christmas card, I thought I would do it in reds. Now granted, this has already been inked up, so the red is not gonna show through like crazy because the, the brown ink is already there. But it's just to help, and I only want this buffalo plaid to be in certain areas of my card, not the whole card. So I am going to just begin bringing in some of that red color into my top corner here and then lightly fanning it out towards the center. And then I'm gonna flip my card over and do the same thing on the other side. Again, not a heavy hand. This is just to add a little bit of the color because we're gonna go back in with our stencil and we are going to, oops, now we're going to add the harder pressure of the red. Again, you can use whatever color you want. You can do it in greens, browns, whatever you wish. And I'm just really gonna work the red in there to get that pattern in my corner. And then I'm going to flip it and do the exact thing in my opposite corner. And again, I'm just making sure that I add more layers of the ink so that you can differentiate from your bottom layer to your top. And there is my stenciled design right there okay you can do all four corners you can do the whole card if you want but again i still wanted for me i wanted to have that wood grain type look on there okay so now there's two things you can do and this is optional of what you would like you can go ahead and cut out another one of these greetings in black paper or a red paper or a dark green paper so that it's matted on there. Because we're going to be tucking our leaves, oops, underneath these at some point. So if you don't want them to um, show through on all of the letters, you'll be able to have that second layer there that's going to help with that. But in the meantime, what we want to do is we want to ink the edges of our leaves because we don't want them to be this bright green, fresh color when we're trying to mat down the rest of the card. So I'm just going to take, again, this is our pecan brown. And I'm just going to ever so lightly go on the edges of my leaves just to mute them a little bit.
And I'm using a light pressure, and then I'm even going to go a little bit more just to give them some variation with the inking on them. Okay, and you can add as much or as little darkness as you'd like, but always start off going with the light. You can always add on more ink, but you can't take it off. So just remember that, so not to have too heavy of a hand putting the edges on. You just want enough to make them look a little multicolored with that brown on there. Kind of just dampen it up a little. There we go. So now our leaves are colored as well. As for our season tag, um, because it was printed um, black on white paper, the edges are um, white. If you don't like that, you can always take a black ink pad and just run that to get the white off of your edge, as you can see, like I did here. I can't angle it well, but let's try half and half on this side to show you if we can do it that way. Okay, so yeah, you can see it's, I did the ink on the edges here, and that's just a personal preference. Um, some people like white to show, I do not. I don't like white core, paper, or anything of that nature. So I am just going to do that to seal that the whole thing is now black on the sides there. Okay. So now back to our card. Um, you can take a piece of black card stock and make a strip. Or like I said before, you can double cut out and mat this. So that is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go grab a scrap piece of black cardstock out of my um, normal stash. And you can do the same or, again, um, do a band. And I'm going to go double cut another word greeting. Okay, so now I have my greetings in gold and my greetings in black. And I just kind of want to use it as a shadowy type piece. So I am going to glue it um, a little to the right and down the gold piece on top of the black piece just to make let me move this out of the way. Maybe you can see it better. Just so it kind of gives like an offset of a shadow. So I am just going to get my glue and start adding some glue. To where the overlaps are going to be. Don't forget your little eye. Okay. And we're just going to go to the right and drop down a small amount. And with wet glue, it gives you a little bit of wiggle room and time to set it and move the pieces how you want. And that is my sentiment part now. Okay. And then what you can do if you don't feel that this is bold enough for you, you can also go back with a light gray or um, a black to add even some more texture to that as well. So just don't be um, limited to how I'm making my card. You can build it up even more. And actually, I think I'm going to try it. I don't know how it's going to look. Um, maybe I'll do it with gray. Let's see. Where is that little scrap that we had before? I don't know where I put it, but I guess I can start with some gray, and then I can always add black if I don't like it. 
And I'm just gonna, oop, helps if you do it in the right spot. This is a Moon Rock Gray ink. Let's see if it's pulling it out. Oh, actually it does. It just adds a little bit more texture and it actually makes the red pop a little bit more. So again, you can keep doing things of that nature. Line up your stencil, which I didn't. There we go. Line that up again. Ooh. And just, I'm just going to do it in the really dark crevice of the corner over here on this one. Didn't know if I was going to like it or not, but I kind of do. So now I have a little bit of grayish black going into the red, going into the brown. Okay, so um, back to our sentiment. You're going to eyeball where you want your pieces to be. So you're going to have your season's greetings, and I'm going to put that first when I end up gluing it because I'm going to have probably the T cover up a part of the tag there. So I know I'm going to want that to go there. So I'm going to go ahead and put down the seasons part because that is kind of the no-brainer assembly part on here. Just make sure you have it where it's going straight. And as I say that, mine's not. There we go. And then there's your greetings. And then you're going to get out your little branches here and kind of play around on where you want them to go. And I'm going to want to tuck one. And you can even, um, to make it 3D-ish, if it's not going to like a child or anything, to have part of it still unglued to give it more texture, or you can glue the whole thing down. That is up to you depending on you know who you're sending it to. But I'm just gonna play with some of these greeneries to kind of get an idea of where I'm gonna want them to go. We have three of them here. And this one maybe we can hang coming out. And then don't forget you also have your Three red berries, which will just go on top at the end, but I just don't want you to forget that we actually have these. Oop, they're hard to get out of the bag. They're so tiny. If for whatever reason you lose one of these or it goes flying across your room from static clean getting out of the bag, um, you can just cut one out of a regular hole punch or if you have red sequins and you want to jazz it up or some red gems you can do that as well so i'm just eyeballing like i said where i want my greenery to go and i kind of like it and this is a tip i learned from one of my dt members um mindy which she's awesome she will place out her card like that which is what i've always done but then i end up taking everything off and then putting it back and kind of trying to remember where I put it. A little tip that she brought to my attention and to our group is if you just get a scrap piece of paper or some chipboard, you put the glue, a glob of glue there, and then you can actually slide it under your piece. And then everything is actually staying where it needs to stay. So we are going to do that technique right now. We're just gonna add some glue here. And we are going to do this first leaf, and you're going to push it up and under. And this glue dries clear, so you don't really have to worry about that. And now look at it. It's exactly where you wanted it to be. So I'm going to flip my card around to do this over here. Get the glue underneath as well. Again, the glue dries clear, so I'm not worried about it at this time. So there is, whoop, ended up moving, but okay. You get the idea of that little tip. I am going to want, um, I like the idea 
uh, that this twig is underneath this part of the word and then comes over that part. So I am going to um, try to keep it that way as I glue just this section right now. Oop, hold that in place. Kind of sigsaw the glue where it needs to be. Line that back up a little bit where it needed, such as there. I'm going to titter and tilt my greetings a little. So I'm actually not going to glue down this part of my leaf, but you are more than welcome to do so. But now since those pieces are in place, I know I can remove my greetings and add my glue to it how I want it. So let's get that all ready to go. Again, I want to make sure that T is going to cover this one section I have here. Get that in there. And then I want to make sure to lift up my leaf here. And then push it off. And you know what? I'm going to add just a little bit of glue. I lied, but just so this piece doesn't get torn. Mm, so hard, but it's still going over the G, but it's under the other parts of my word. So there we have the starting of that. And now we have our little berries. I am going to also ink up the sides of my berries. They're super tiny, but since we inked up our leaves, I want it to be a little cohesive with that. So let me get this my brush out. I am going to just use this little tool I have so that I can hold it in place while I dab the ink Oops, on it because it is tiny and I don't want it to go flying and then I end up losing my little berry. <laughs> There we go, and one more. There we go. So there we just inked up our berries a little bit. Bring back our card. And once again, you just wanna um, try and figure out where you want your berries to go in your cluster. Um, I like when there's three berries together you know, when they overlap like a traditional type berry, but you can cut more of these if you want. Again, it's just a standard hole punch size. You can move them to whichever branch you want it to be on. I think it just showed up more on the branch down there. So I'm going to, that's where I'm going to put mine. Just add a little glue here. Start laying them down. And again, with the wet glue, you have a little bit of wiggle time. And one more little bit of glue right there. And move it down here. And there is the card. So you see what I meant by saying it's kind of more of a masculine type greeting card. Little traditional, woodsy, and I just that's just the kind of feel I wanted to go with for that. And now we're just going to take it and we're just going to adhere it to the top of our card base. Make sure you open your card so you know which way it's got to go. And I'm just going to get some glue one more time. And put this down. Like so. Just line it up again. That wet glue gives you 
some extra time to wiggle it where it needs to go. And there you have a cute woodland greeting card. It's a little fancy gold. And then the rest of it is really quite rustic looking. You can always take a gel pen if you want and add highlights to your berries. Like so. However you want. Again, replace those with um, rhinestone gems or sequins if you want to have it have a little bit more of a sparkle. You can also, if you have um, any gold metallic twine or ribbing, you can put um, a cute little bow on there as well. Uh, again, I wanted to keep it more masculine, so that is why um, this is now completed. So that is the end of our segment. Uh, we are Stamp Anything. We normally are a coloring group. We do our chibi kids, but I wanted to show you that we do offer dyes. So if you're not into coloring, but you like using die cuts, um, there's so much versatility that you can do without having to color images. And this is just um, a quick example of a no coloring card that we did using inks, stencils, and dies. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day, and I will talk to you all soon. Bye!